spawning. Down here in the bottom position of Jagannatha, this is our uh, Neeb. <laughs> this is our Neeb. There we go. Our Neeb. USA. USA. Hey, USA. Oh. And in the top right hand position, spawning as a red Zerk player, representing the bug race, it is Armani. And this is kind of an aside, but you know what I hate the most about Nidus Worms? What's that? Just the building, man. I mean, just the, the gaping. It's the only gaping Zerg structure, if you think about it, right? Like, nothing else is gaping. Everything else is, like, disgusting or has, like, a cave in it. But it's just the Nidus Worm is just so open. Like, with its teeth and it pulsates. And, like, it, 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 it like, chews up units when it goes in it. I don't know. I just get weird vibes every time I see it. Well, you are you getting thing. weird? Are you getting weird vibes right now? As Neeb has dropped a pylon into Armani's base, and he is going to be cannon rushing the Korean uh, Korean Zerg here. Mm -hmm. Looks like he even scouts it a little bit late. Armani does, and the three <laughs> pylons. Happy birthday to me! We're going to be seeing a cannon rush to start this game out. Just one going down for the time being to deny this base. Uh, from going down and Neeb is going to be a little bit annoying here. He does cancel and all the drones actually come on down. So this is actually swatted away pretty expertly by Armani. And I was really excited there for a second. But it looks like Neeb kind of got the, the poop end of the stick on this one. Yeah, he had a little bit of trouble there getting it started up. But, uh, you know, it still, it still uh, delays a little bit of mining time here for Armani. He didn't really... Uh, like, he didn't really commit super heavily to it as he's got his second Nexus down, the gateway, the cyber core wall. So, mm -hmm. he's not in a bad spot. He just... Yeah, it was worth it to try. Yeah, worth a try. Yeah, but the, I feel like he could have done a little bit more, especially with all that cancel money he made. He could have maybe thrown down two cannons and put a pylon on one. That way the, Zerg, uh, the drones don't have enough surface area. And it's kind of more of a committal and it's less certain and maybe it denies more mining. But anyways, we're past that point in the game now. Uh, we see a cannon coming at, coming up back at home for Neeb, uh, which is kind of, if you ask me, I think it's a little overly defensive, um, but I can definitely understand it, you know. Uh, you're not sure if the Adip will come out in time. You're not sure if Armani's going to move out the map like almost immediately and flood you with flings. So just playing safe is Neeb, going, getting us target as well. And aside from that early cannon rush, no real surprises here, Pastor. Thank you to Muhugler in the chat for 300 bits. We really appreciate it. It's going to put on some amazing StarCraft 2 events with that. And, I mean, Neeb here, he's go behind this, he's going into Stargate play, uh, which is kind of understandable on such a large map such as Jagannatha. And I think really from this, this is really, if you're going to go Void Razor, if you're going to go for some sort of craziness, which, I mean, he already has, this is the map to do it because you have so much room to breathe. Now, Armani, he does mm. have that third base up and running here pretty soon. Uh, he's going to be able to start getting that explosion. And, oh, my gosh, I, w I really hoped I wasn't right. But there you go. Hmm. <laughs> what, what do we write about? The, the Void Rays? The Void Ray. Oh, okay. Now, I think it's just going to be just the one, if I'm being honest. But as soon as I say that, I look at the gases in the natural, right? And the thing about mass Void Ray builds is that you delay the gases a lot because Void Rays, you know, they're a lot more mineral intensive than they are gas intensive and you can afford to like hold off on getting additional gas. Um, so, and you would have a Nexus out by now, right? Um, at the 420 mark. And it looks like he is getting that right now. And my dreams are crushed as he goes from the Oracle, but for a second there, it kind of looked like he was going mass Void Rays and I was so happy. But it is just going to be the third base expansion and it looks like we're geared up for a nice little macro gate here, Passer. Yeah, I mean, from here, it, it should just kind of standard out. This one Void Ray is uh, going to just deny that Overlord scouting. It's going to force Armani to kind of spread on the ground with this creep, uh, just to, if he wants to keep an eye on what's going on. And fun fact to note, they actually made it so that you can't cancel a creep tumor anymore. So every single time he loses that frontal creep, uh, he's going to have to send another queen out there to... Uh, to clean that up and I mean that's going to delay him a little bit on his injects when he has such a small number of queens mm -hmm. I, I think you exactly hit the nail on the nail on the head there and um, I, if we take a look at what Armani is going for in this game we see the Roach Warren and the Lair coming on up right so here's my reasoning Jagannath is a huge map right absolutely ginormous map you have space everywhere to breathe There's, it's huge right I think if you're going to go 
um, Swarm Host uh, Roach Play, which you've seen Armani use to great success this series, this is the game to do it on because, or rather, this is the map to do it on, sorry, because of just the sheer volume um, that this map offers. And I mean, he has a Roach Warren. We don't really see anything too exciting coming out from him, so maybe we'll see some of that. Yeah, a lot of options open to him. He's actually going to go. Uh, we do have an explosion of gases coming down from both sides. Uh, mm -hmm. we got the Lair going to be finishing up as well. The Oracle's going to come in here. Not really get too much done just yet. They're going to kind of just be a nuisance now, starting to get some of that damage, but you have to be careful with them. And, I mean, uh, it's really hard to say for Armani right now just because I don't see his next tech choice. There you go. He's actually probably expecting this. Uh, to be a little bit more heavily into that Stargate, but already Neeb is completely on a different path. Yeah, absolutely. Now, here's here's kind of a weird thing. He goes for the Hydroden. I think the the Roach Worm was just defensive, right? He goes for a Hydroden, but he's oh researching my God. one, which makes sense. And he's getting clear with Constitution and Aspire all you, at the same time. So Have you seen really where the spawn... Have you seen where the spire is? No, let me uh, click on it real quick. I <laughs> see. <laughs> so we have chosen proxy spire. I haven't seen this in so long. I know it's been. I know it's. I've seen StarCraft Two HL on YouTube. Great channel. Go check it out. Um, I've seen this in the thumbnail before, but I didn't think we'd be seeing it this game. Proxy spire, probably one of the favorite, one of my top ten most favorite proxies to see from a third. And, and I, gotta, it's I think it's gonna hit him like a truck. And I think it's interesting because the thing is, Neep isn't really out on the map scouting. He doesn't have any hallucinations on. And in fact, his sentries are going to fall here to a really nice surround uh, by, by these links. So wow. nice pickoffs there by Armani. And now he can just back out of here. Um, yeah. As yeah, that was really good. Yeah. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. I lost my train of thought there because that was so crazy to get that. That's okay. I interrupted you anyway, so I feel like I have a, a lot of leeway to give to you on this one. But here's the thing. 13 Mutalists now coming on out. What does Neeb have to kill 13 Mutalists? Well, he has... Okay, he kind of has a 6th sense here. He's building photon cannons in his bases, which just goes to show that Neeb has been around for a while, and his 6th sense knows when something's off, right? He's like, where's all your gas? What's going on? I don't know what you're doing. Um, so he is preparing for that now, but he really just has one Archon. That's his anti year. Storm and one Archon. And if I were to make a guess, I would say these mutants are going to make a terrible, terrible run of Neeb space. Uh, but let's see. I mean, if you can mitigate the damage somehow, it'll be fine. But Armani's committing heavily to this, so. Oh, look Ooh. at that! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we've all been there. Don't even. Okay, I play Protoss. Buddy, we have all been there. <laughs> You just gotta feel bad. He knew something was up, but he just didn't know quite what was up. He just won the game off of that. <laughs> that was absolutely... Was too much I, I, I feel like... bad for laughing at that. You know, Neem has got to feel devastated. I, 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 honestly, I mean, I, I know I would. Heart I don't goes even out think, to the guy. <laughs> I don't even think he needed to GG out of there, like you said before. The photon cannons were there. Uh, he had some shield batteries to help himself out. Uh, he could have easily just warped in some of those archons. And I mean, the storms don't do them on your mineral lines, kids. That's a uh, that's a pro tip right there. But uh, you know, it could keep him on the retreat for a very long time. But yeah, uh, and like you're gonna lose probes. Like you're always gonna lose probes. You can't deny that. You're gonna lose like 12, 13 probes there. But you know, I feel like. It's after that you stabilize a little bit. You have Storm, you plop a Templar at every base, you get some Stalkers around, you know, you get an Archon or two, have oh. them move around like your main and natural to kind of defend. And you're probably leader. You know, it's not, yeah, you. next map is ready. It's going to be on Light Shade, but I don't feel like that was an instant GG's kind of situation. Ah, uh, well, uh, well right. but it was really funny to see, so I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> it was really entertained by that. Yeah, that was still pretty, that was still pretty funny. Um, but, you know, Neep still has a pretty good lifeline here. We might be seeing some more crazy shenanigans from him. Now, unfortunately, this seems to be happening to Neep in these qualifiers. Because if you guys have actually seen our YouTube channel, we posted his games versus Soul. And uh, something else crazy happened in that one. Basically, he pulled his workers away from the Widow Mines a second too late and insta-GG'd out uh, 
after he lost over 20 workers in t five seconds. <laughs> poor Neve, man. I mean, poor mystery player who we don't know who he is because we haven't introduced him yet. But man, your heart has got to go out of him. Spawning in the bottom right hand position of Lightshade. He's had kind of a rough one, but hopefully he's looking to bring it back. It is the blue Protoss player representing Ting Mobile. It is Neve. And his opponent up here in the top going up in a very convincing manner. He is Armani. And I believe he's still on Africa Freaks. I'd have to. I, I think so. Um, yeah, he's, he's on mean, Africa Freaks. But can we just say like how while we wait for this game to really start and interesting things to happen. Can we just talk about like how well Armani hit that last game? Like. Not only did, like, he put procs yet, which already is kind of, like, you know, pretty out there to do, even if you're trying to hide a spire. Um, it's also kind of, like, he built the Hydra Den, too, you know? Like, he was, like, you're trying to, like, sell a story to me. He was, like, oh, I'm going Hydraling Bane. I'm getting my workers up. I'm macroing. I'm getting upgrades, blah, 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 blah. But in reality, like, there was really nothing. And I feel like part of the problem there, too, was remember that good, good links around on the mortars and the sentries, Right. Right. Yeah, so like if you if you like lose all of that, you're not gonna be able to scout because that's 200 gas you put into scouting. You put into sentries that are oh. supposed to send phoenixes out that are supposed to see what's going on, you know. So it just goes to show that like in every Starcraft game, the, the tiniest thing can make the biggest difference, you know. But yeah, you let's know. not talk about many things because right now we have a cannon rush happening past it. Yeah, this is actually really committed. He has completely walled off and he's given himself such a huge space to work with. And actually, just gonna bait these uh, couple of workers in right now. Neeb, you absolute legend. Welcome to North America. Welcome to North America, indeed. I think this is 99% money back guarantee. This is done purely out of spite. I guarantee it. And a robot. Oh robo no. All right, you guys all know what build this is. You know the rules, and so does Neeb. It's gonna be a proxy robo shield battery rush. Now, these kind of builds. Really, Kappa, is there, if Protoss were Bion, or rather if Bion were Protoss, he would do this build like 90% of the time because most of the time, it just comes back to how well you can micro it. There's no real, like, super strong candle play the Zerg can immediately do to it. It just has to be a pure micro versus micro battle here, and I'm so excited for this mess. 60% of the time, it works every time. And I mean, behind this, Armani already going to get a couple of the moves that he needs. He's going to go straight up to Lair Tech. And with that, he's probably going to going to try and break out with Nidus Worm. Um, since he's going for that, I don't really see him uh, trying to expand his way out of this. He doesn't even have a drone out on the map right now to do that. Although, I'm wondering what happened to his scouting drone, where he could have probably thrown down a, uh, a proxy hatchery just to deal with uh, just to uh, get some counter damage in, but I digress as Armani just really needs to defend the high ground for right now um, to make yeah, this work. I mean, it's always kind of weird when you go Nidus to deal with like uh, Proxy Robo, right? Because it's like, yeah, you can get out of your base with it. Yeah, you can put a Nidus in their main base, but you pretty much commit yourself to the fact that if Neeb keeps pumping Immortals, keeps getting Warpisms, it's going to be extremely difficult to try and kill that army right with just pure links right it's the almost almost undoable right so i mean he's gonna do a lot of damage himself but armani really has to think about how he's gonna deal with the main army of Neve. but that's neither here nor there and let's see what damage gets done this war prism taking no whole damage at all Neve in typical Neve fashion leaves that uh engagement with one uh point of health on his shields but i don't really think he spotted that layer yet oh he has so he absolutely knows what's going on that's it yeah, he know he knows that this is more than likely uh, Nidus play or something like that because he does, like he does have enough here. He's actually just gonna recall the War Prism uh, now. Nothing in the Nidus Worm okay. just yet. There we go. He's gonna start getting in there. Uh, but yeah, this is not going to go up. And already Neeb is in a much better position than he was in the last game. Although that does that kind of weaken this frontal push a little bit and. I mean, I like this from Armani, trying to send some counter damage across. Yeah, I mean, it delays it, but now Neeb's not going to die at home. He has a cannon and a, you know, a mortal on patrol, so he's not going to get caught out by anything like that, and he knows there's a Nidus Worm. You can listen for it if you can't see it. Um, and yeah, he's going to go ahead and find the new one popping up his main base as well, but Armani, 
he's not really being able to build a proper response to this. Like I said, I mean, he's just it's just pure links right now, right? And Armani's just gonna go with the kill him faster route. The Nice Worm does finish. <laughs> One Queen does come on out. Uh, kind of a sad story for Nice Worms. Uh, this um, entire tournament is just a single Queen coming out. Um, like a donation. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of liking. I'm liking this position, Passer. I'm really liking it for Neep. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, Armani not able to expand. Uh, I kind of would like to see him kind of just drop. Okay, never mind. But <laughs> I, <laughs> I wanted him to. I wanted him to uh, prob potentially just like drop a couple of drones out on the map. Probably just go send send a hatchery somewhere and just kind of macro his way out of that with the Nidus Worm. That makes it a lot easier to do. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I can kind of understand why he tapped out of that situation. And uh, yeah, a pretty pretty good game, pretty solid North American game. I got to say for that one. Yeah, I mean that went pretty much exactly how I was expecting it to go. I really like the recall there on the immortal. I mean, I don't think it's something most people will do right away. Uh, I think a lot of people like just try and fight it with probes, but I think the recall was really smart. He's not going to lose his robo or shield batteries or immortal on the other side of the map because he has a bunch of cannons, right? And you know, it's only links. He can't have roaches like out this fast. So I think it was a very mature decision. And I think that Armani just, I don't know. Sometimes you just can't find the damage you need to do. Sometimes the Nidus doesn't go up and that's the entire game. Yeah, now uh, let me get a couple of updates for you guys um, over on Creighton's channel. It looks like parting is one to one with uh, Gerald. Uh, that game Ooh. is still going on. Rotterdam is covering the first game of Estrella versus Bion. Uh That's going to be a very interesting one to watch. Wardy is obviously here with us. And if you speak a little, a little bit of the Deutsch. Uh, looks like Take TV is uh, covering the one-to-one -one series of Lambo and Kior. So a lot of good channels showing off everything that there is. And I think after this, we're going to drop to the lower bracket just to get some more of those amazing games. But speaking of amazing games, these have already been amazing. Spawning up here in the top position of Pillars of Gold. He is Neeb. And probably about to get walloped again with a cannon rush in the bottom left hand corner of Pillars of Gold. It is a red Zerg player, Armani. And seriously, folks, if you don't have at least five tabs of StarCraft open in your browser right now, you are doing this wrong. Lots of great streams out there. Hop in between them, see, find a game you like, and I guarantee you, you'll be satisfied. Now, Neeb, it looks like I was a little bit wrong. Just wants to go for the regular hatch block. He's had his, he's had his fill of cannon rushes for the day. He's very satiated. Just as I am satiated from eating that pasta that my girlfriend made. Very nice. Um, but yeah, he's just going to go ahead and play pretty standard. At least for the first couple minutes of this game. So let's talk about Pillars of Gold for a second. I mean, when you look at this map um, as a Protoss player, it, it's nothing too remarkable, right? I mean, the main point of contention is really taking that fourth. You can be spread apart very thin. And we see Armani um, throwing down the Hydra this stand in game number one, even though it was a fake. I feel like this would be a great map to go Hydraling Bane on, you know, just hit every angle and just build yourself a nice lead because we all know Neve in late game is an absolute demon. Yeah, I mean, there's not... Yeah, oh, yeah, I definitely agree with you there. Neve is pretty much top top one in a control uh, for his units. His micro is impeccable, and he can keep up with the best of macro. It's kind of funny to think that he is actually the first foreigner to ever win a Korean tournament. Uh, Back yeah. in 2017, I believe it was. I think so. He won a uh, Kespa Cup or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. He won like the Kespa Cup or the Super Tournament or something. And yeah. uh, that was incredible to see back then because, I mean, think of the players who have tried and failed to do so. Like Idra, mm -hmm. uh, other player, Nurtia, who Okay, I'm forgetting names here. No, no, you're <laughs> absolutely right. I mean, Neeb really set the precedent that foreigners can take down Koreans, right? And I, of course, nowadays, when we say that, it's kind of like, you know, duh. Yeah, There's so many duh. foreigners out there nowadays. Australia's, like our own Australia's doing really great. Rainer and Clem, you know, giving some of the best in the world, big runs for their money. But um, yeah, I mean, it, he really was the first one to really set the precedent. And I think that inspired a lot of these uh, players to really, you know, not be afraid versus Koreans, you know, not let the nerves get to them. And, you know, Neeb is a very strong, solid player with great game sense, you know? 
he quit in like the first two seconds of the first game because he was 100% sure he was going to lose. And even though, you know, it's kind of debatable as to whether or not he was, he was 100% sure of it. And that's what makes a good player good is that they can make decisions fast and they can make them decisively, right? Like so much time is lost hemming and hawing in StarCraft that oftentimes it's just better to do something well than, you know, something else not so well. If that makes sense, like the, yeah. the wrong thing, well, rather than the right thing, perfectly, but a little bit later, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, behind this, uh, we do see once again that kind of early void ray. This is pretty much just there to uh, be aggressive. And I mean, Armani knew this was popping out. If you uh, take a look inside there, you can actually see the unit that is warping in. Little fun <laughs> fact. So um, he knew it was Void Ray, and he also saw the Oracle. So he's not going to overreact here at all. And, uh, yeah, it looks like Gerald actually just took out a parting 2-1. to one. So that is a little bit of an update there as we Whoa. keep things going. Big boy. Ah, oh, man, a goblin over you thermal, Gerald versus over parting. I mean, we're seeing a lot of upsets in this tournament. Indeed. And I mean, this yeah. is kind of what I was expecting from the North America stuff. Uh, I think this is the first one uh, where we've seen that kind of crazy uh, shenaniganry uh, so far, just with that cannon rush. But uh, I really hope to see more of it as the North American players are battling for their spot against some of the best in the world. Like, oh, this absolutely. is a completely open qualifier. Oh, yeah. 100% open. And crazy shenaniganry begets crazy shenaniganry. So. I mean, the more crazy shenaniganry I can see, personally, the better. Going into this game, there's not too much crazy shenaniganry. I mean, Neve's going to try for a stasis ward in the main base, which is going to get a drone. So not, you know, nothing too noteworthy there. We see a Roach Warren coming out for Armani, Ooh. probably just something defensive. Uh, just trying to hold off against any sort of early aggression or early mid-game aggression from Neve. And we can see Neve. Here's an interesting thing, Pastor. He's going for uh, Resonating Glaives. Now, that's a little bit late. Like, I got to say, usually you want to get that Twilight Council and the Robo Facility out nice and early to deal with this. So this kind of tells me that although he is going to be committing quite heavily to it, if you just take a look at the number of adepts, it, um, without that Warp Prism, there's no staying power with it. Uh, you have to walk yeah. your units all the way across the map. So it's a completely non-committed Galeva's attack, which I really enjoy because... Armani might overextend himself, wondering what it is. Yeah, I mean, uh, Neeb does love his adepts. It's always been a thing he's implemented since Legacy of the Void. He really, really loves them. But, I mean, let's see if Armani can hold on to this. Now, adepts are never really going to try and fight the army head up. The idea is you pull the Zerg all over the place and you force them mm. this way and that way. And by the time they've done defending one area, you're attacking another. And drones go down by the dozen. Uh, and we can see, whoa, he's going to let that finish as soon as oh, no. he's done. I don't like this. I don't like it at all. Yeah, that was a very ballsy play right there. And like we were saying, like I said, there's not going to be any reinforcements with this because there is no war prism. OK, there we go. We get some drone kills right now, but mm -hmm. he still definitely wants to get a little bit more. Behind this, he's got the robo double robo facility coming up, so he's already got his transition, but still this was a very big commitment early on yeah and what did it get him got him five drones and he got to oh i mean again is the shade as well that was a mistake okay so this has just gone from bad to really really bad for neve um he's l lost every single adept now and unfortunately that's going to mean that he has just sacrificed 14 adepts for a grand total of eight drones i guess uh 11 drones now that he's uh getting a couple more with these bad girls and actually well a lot more see, see nice. adams are kind of like widow mines in that you only really need one of them to do damage right so now it's less disastrous 16 adams for 14 drones still not what you're looking for and i think just that miss shade was was really bad looks like armani is going to be prepping up for swarm hosts once again getting that infestation pit down uh currently about oh I <laughs> he started a spire right yeah, he got this. He got the spire yeah. up. I think he canceled it, or did he let it finish? No, I don't see it. So yeah, he can. He, he canceled it. Yeah, uh, okay, I guess so most of the depths. Yeah, the depths came in. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. Um, Neeb is gonna go ahead and get a cannon in each mineral line, so that if meters come by, he can quit immediately again. Um, but no such thing is happening so far. 
Uh, Neeb just on his side of the map, gonna have to uh, be content with defending against Swarm Host um, play, or possibly just a very fast hive here, uh, which seems to be what's going on. So curious to see what begets that. Uh, Neeb, maybe just a couple of sentries and immortals. You know, it's solid as long as it stays by its shield batteries. You can make magic happen, and it looks like the in the mid game, both players just being able to get to where they want to get to be. Yeah, we've pretty much uh, stabilized here pretty effectively, and it actually was parting that one, not uh, Gerald. Uh, I can't read scores. Oh, okay. But, uh, okay. I was like, oh my goodness. But yeah, I uh, mean, behind this, Armani has so many options available to him. Uh, he's obviously got those swarm hosts coming in right now, but with that Hydralisk Den, he can easily transition into Lurkers uh, with that Hive. Those upgrades just make it so difficult for the Protoss player to engage into this. And looking at it, Armani actually just going to sacrifice his fourth base um, for the time being, kind of baiting the army in, uh, trying to get a couple more good vials, and uh, waiting for the Locust as well. Yeah, I feel like uh, Neeb was able to find a really good timing here to where Armani didn't really have anything that he wanted to up. Um, he is going for a Swarm host eventually, but it was so indecisive. Like, he went for a Spire, canceled Spire, threw on the Hydrogen, not getting any Hydras. Then he was starting to get Hive, and then he canceled the Hive. So, I mean, he, he just doesn't really know what he wants to do here. And I feel like he's at real danger of uh, getting pushed too strongly here. Now, a counterattack of Ling's on the other side of the map is going to get some value here, and the Locusts are going to unload on that third base. And Neeb, if he can find oh. the opening, the chink in the armor, maybe he can push through. And the Locust landed in a Stasis War 2. This is disastrous, Passer. You know, funnily enough, that might be the best thing for him if Neeb's not really paying attention there. But in the front, Neeb going to continue this push. The Ravagers getting pushed away by those force fields. They will be taken down by the Zealots. And now the drones start to fall as well. So Armani unable to hold on there. And Neeb with uh, not necessarily an upset.